There are some stations that play great top 40, but who wants to listen to the same old tunes every day? Tonight, you get something new, something fresh, something that will change your way of life. Tonight, you get the Frankie Slauson Show. On the Frankie Slauson Show, you'll hear great rare and lost songs from the 50s through today, plus iconic celebrity interviews and much, much more. So get ready, Rapid City, for the Frankie Slauson Show. The Frankie Slauson Show has arrived on your airwaves and now the School of Mines in Rapid City, South Dakota. Dakota, KTEQ 91.3 FM, and Frankie Slauson Productions present The Frankie Slauson Show. I've been trying to get my bosses to make the show 24 hours long since day one. We'll start off a little introduction and then we'll just kind of go into it, okay? Go for All it. right. Hey, everybody, welcome to the another great edition of The Frankie Slauson Show. Um, uh, well, it's on YouTube, and it's also on uh, KTech Radio, KTEQ.org, here at the School of Mines in Rapid City, South Dakota. I am your host, Frankie Slauson, and uh, today we have reached a, an official milestone. I've done, at least for 2013, I, uh, well, as you guys know, I've interviewed a lot of different entertainers and stuff like that. A lot of people who have done stuff, uh, a lot of cool things uh, in, in the in the in the work world, not just working in factories or being teachers or, you know, farmers or anything, but nothing against doing that stuff. But today I have reached a milestone of uh, my 50th guest of 2013, Mr. Joshua Tabak. And if you don't know the name, well, you might know some of his animation. And uh, welcome to the show, Josh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be here. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, virtually. I mean, uh, the digital world is great. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We don't need to do that again, huh? <laughs> so how's how's it going, Josh? How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm. I'm. Uh, I've been pretty good these days. I'm actually getting my car on my way to work. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I suppose you can experience some of my work day with me. Oh, that's great. That's great. The, hear the sights, the sounds, and maybe the smells. Well, I keep saying smells, but I don't know. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you want to smell L.A. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I, and that's just because of the fact that you guys are, you live right in California, and I live in South Dakota, so there's an hour hour time difference, so... So it's only like eight forty one a.m. over there, roughly. Yes, it is exactly. Yeah. So what, what's life like living in California? First of all. Um. Well, I grew up in New Jersey and I went to college in Philadelphia. Uh. So it's different. It's. I would say. I mean, Cal. Did you say California or Los Angeles? I said. Uh, I think I said Los Angeles. I think or, or California. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's the same yeah, thing. California. <laughs> yeah. California is so big. Uh, there's so many different, uh, you know, areas and, you know, cultural towns and stuff like that. But, like, Los Angeles itself is different than anything. It's, it's kind of this, like, little place, I think, that started, you know, years ago. And then it was like, hey, well, I would put a street there. Oh, and she would go good over there. And, oh, hey, let's put some business here. Oh, let's make movies. It's cool here. It's in a rain. And it just sort of grew up all around itself and didn't really know what it was doing it didn't have much of a purpose besides the movie industry and um, everything sort of like grew around that uh, so it, it's kind of weird you know it's, it's 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 definitely more laid back in some ways and then definitely kind of you know there's a cliche that it's, it's kind of fake, but in, in a way it's not because everyone sort of knows. Everyone's overly PC a lot of the time. Huh. So you know that's not really what they're thinking. Uh-huh. But they're real nice about it. But, I mean, is it, is it uh, really expensive to live in Los Angeles, or, or can you live by pretty cheap if you can? Uh, yeah, I mean, the cost of living is pretty high, but, uh, you know, I hear it's higher in places like Manhattan, Chicago, like bigger metropolises. Yeah. It kind of fooled you, this city. You don't... It, it's so... You know, I feel like I just badmouthed L.A., which I didn't mean to. <laughs> like, right now, what is it? It's, uh, you know, the middle of October, and I don't have a jacket on. I'm driving to work, and uh, it's sunny, and I'm looking at a big mountain, the mountains of Burbank, and I'm <laughs> driving to work, and it's it's pretty darn nice. Oh, wow. You know, but it's... It's, uh... I don't know, everyone says it's very expensive. It depends on what you're doing and how you live. Yeah. It's more expensive than the middle of suburbia... You know, you know, in the Midwest, I'm sure, but oh yeah, um, you know, it's not cheap, 
but I've been I've been out here almost twenty years. You know, I, I'm probably not a good judge <laughs> because when I moved out here, I was you know twenty two, right out of college, uh-huh. and I didn't have much of anything in knowledge of living on my own. So most of living on my own, except for college, was out here. Wow. So, so, so you know, I don't. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, because of the fact that you were able to make a living uh, living in California as an animator, I mean, that, I'm sure that takes care of you pretty well, you know? Yeah, it pays pretty well. That's one reason why, you know, not why I initially got into it, but when I decided to really go for it when I was in school, it was during, excuse me, during the animation boom, uh, the Disney boom in the 90s, when you know all the movies were really good and really popular and doing well, and uh, there were some animators that were making six figures and stuff like that because there was just so much success. So I was like, well, I'm gonna. I went to a, a school that had a lot of fine arts majors, also like you know, the glass blowing was a major. <laughs> so uh, you know what those people ended up doing. Hopefully, glass blowing. But uh, you know who knows. So <laughs> I was like, I'm going to draw, be an artist, and have an industry job, like have a a real job where I go to work and I get paid regularly, and it it, it was this thing on the horizon that was very realistic and uh, you know safe. Oh, sure. For, from that point of view, and especially during that time, you know, the business has changed a bit as far as safety, um, but uh, um, and pay scale. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> you know, it, it depends on where you work. It, Overall, we tend to make a really good living, uh, you know, depending on what facet of the industry you work in, whether it's prime time or um, or daytime slash syndication, you know, the pay scale varies. And then there's a lot of people who jump around freelancing. So uh, if they're good at finding work, they're consistently paid. If they have to, you know, have downtime in between. Like I was speaking to a friend who, who's working consistently now, but he was saying a lot of times you work to you know, you save your money, you're working for the times you're not working. Yeah. So, you know, while you're looking for work, you have the money you save while you made, while you were working. Sure. But, uh, well, I've been lucky, I don't know, no, number of years, long, long number of years, I haven't been unemployed for more than a, three months or so. Jeez. That's pretty damn good. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't part of the conversation you want to get into The Simpsons, but I was on The Simpsons for, like, around 15 years wow. which overall in animation is unheard of huh. um, except for The Simpsons <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and King of the Hill was on for a while too and Futurama different, there's a few primetime shows like that and I'm sure there have been some Disney and, and DreamWorks uh, over the years you know the, the big layoff that happened recently yeah. some of those big name people who were laid off they were there for most of their life yeah, um, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm really that sure. was bouncing around yeah. on Disney I'm sorry, go ahead. I was really surprised how long The Simpsons has, has been uh, on the air. I mean, it's like, it seems like it's one of the uh, next... Again? Uh, it, it, uh, it's, oh, it, it seems like... Uh, yeah, it seems like uh, the, the Simpsons are like one of the most longest running uh, cartoons next to like the Looney Tunes, it seems like. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it's only you know, if I'm mistaken. It is the longest running cartoon ever. I think we beat the Flintstones like years ago. Oh, and okay. I think we were gun part pardon the pun, we were gunning for Gunsmoke, which had twenty I think Gunsmoke had twenty, so I guess we surpassed that. Um so I don't know what the running I think Law and Order or you know, shows like that have been going longer, but as far as sitcoms and I think it's the longest running. They're getting ready to do season twenty six and I used to work there and I may be speaking at a turn. But saying, like, well, since 26 is so close to 30, they're thinking of, like, signing for 26 with an option for why don't we just go to 30. People <laughs> <laughs> will get a that show. I guess it's so. He's getting Energizer Bunny. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's quality, though. I, I, you know, I've been as often as I used to, but when I do, it still looks damn good. Those, you know, my friends in their sleep, they do a bang-up job. That show is, you know, really grew from its inception, um, you know, technically and creatively and artistically there there's a few prime years I was on it was it was a dream to be with them that you were such a fan of yeah and it, at the same time and I, I 
go on and on about that. I'll answer your specific questions. Otherwise, I'm going to go on too many things. <laughs> no, that, that's okay. I mean, uh, uh, well, one of the questions that I was going to ask you that I email or whatever was, uh, uh, like, when you worked for The Simpsons, what, what you did to uh, help uh, the success of the of the show? Well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough. Well, there, guy. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> You know, and, and, uh, well, I mean, it added towards the success. I did, like I said, I was there for 15 years, so uh, I started out, my, my first started out as just doing a few prop show, and I, I took, uh, I'll, I'll fast I took a, when I took a test, I took a test for the critic yeah. and the Simpsons, with an intern at Film Roman, oh. and the critic, I was there for a little bit, some props, and I think it did board revisions, actually, I can't exactly, or or layout revisions. And then uh, they ran out of money for me. The production manager came over to me and said, we don't have money for you anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was a kid. Uh, okay. So he said, do you want to go downstairs? on the like, yeah, yeah, I think that, uh, that'd be good. So uh, I did, did a few props there, and then I started doing character layout. Bold of what we all, most of us did down there, and character layout, quickly describe it. It's basically, you get the storyboard, you you solidify it position for your scene, and then you figure out where the characters are going. And then you get the characters. Oh. You put them in the that they need to be in. Uh, you don't find them that go in between poses. In between, uh, pretty much key animation. It was, it was simplified compared to the features of the DreamWorks. As the show got more developed, I did more like key animating, what they call it on the Simpsons and most of the key animators at the feature houses. Oh. At the feature houses, you get uh, field. Uh, I'm speaking a little no, that's the work okay. there. I'm speaking sec- second hand. You get pieces of scenes and sequence and, um, you know, it, it gets piecemealed to you and you do a few, few seconds. That shot's a few seconds. And on Simpsons, we got scenes, you know, 26 through yeah. you did them. You know, however however many characters were in it how, and what was in it. And, you know, I, I, I was going to go off on a tangent. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, traditionally, character layout will, like, try to that and somewhat during, stopped at composing the scene where you just create a nice composition. So I was back there and, you know, like a photograph. Um, and, and then that's an animator. That's how they do features. You, you know, they work out where the camera goes and what, what's all going to happen. Okay, Mr. Animator, or animator for Ms. Uh, I'm Simpson, King of the Hill, Futurama. Uh, I'm the guy to a well, somewhat, that's a different process these days. I can go into that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we just did it. Oh. Well, that's so cool. it was, it was really, I can't even begin to, I can't even begin to think how many drawings I would draw at a given. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when, when it comes to the, the animated, like, uh, who inspired you in the first place to get into uh <laughs> Well, animation specifically, I was since I was one. The first time I remember getting in trouble in school for drawing was second grade. <laughs> but uh, as far as animating, I didn't realize that I used to have these, I, I don't know how old you are, but they had these Fisher-Price movie viewers with a little movie camera, and you put a cartridge of a film in it, some of the doors, and you'd, okay. you'd crank the side, would click, and you would you would see the little movie play you go forward to frame. So, oh. excuse me, you can see it on eBay. I got yeah. in a box somewhere. But um, from a very early age, there was done, like frame by frame, frame moves, and that's how. So there was this mystery as far as it worked. I guess the mystery was like, well, how do you know what to draw and when, like, make the characters do the things? It wasn't even like I have the stuff that I just said. It wasn't yeah. It's was just, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. Um, when Roger, um, I was in high school, I was junior or senior in high school, I think it was a senior, and uh, that blew my mind. And even though I wasn't going to be an animator, actually, at that point, I was planning on being an actor. Um, oh. uh, but I did in school who drew the little cartoon stuff. And uh, that that just blew my mind and had a, a profound effect. Actually, did, I, I always knew, but I didn't quite realize until the other day, literally, last Friday, which was now Thursday, so almost a week ago, I went to this talk that Richard Williams, who was the animation director on Roger Rabbit, and uh, design the character and everything like that. He had a talk at uh, the 
uh, Academy Motion Picture Arts and Science, um, one of the Mark Davis lectures, who Mark Davis was one of the old Disney animators, one of the nine old men, they called him. Sure. And uh, he gave a big presentation and a talk, and they were able to get tickets because someone else couldn't go. Not that they were expensive, but it's just so quick because, you know, we live in animation town. Yeah. And he's sort of, he's sort of, he's 80 years old now. Uh, and he's actually doing, like, some of the best work of his life. He showed some clips. I was just amazed. But I'm sitting there about 15 minutes in after I got over the novelty of, like, oh, there's, I'm, I'm here at this kind of big, biggie-wiggy deal, you know, with animators. And biggie-wiggy means we're quiet, not that we're dressed up. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, he, was, he was telling his stories, and he was talking about the people who him and how they influenced him, Snow White when he was a kid, and, and all the things that I sort of thought. And then I, and, but he's the guy in the room with him. And uh, it just really struck me how kind of that night and that moment was for me. And that that, like, that in a way kind of prepped me uh, for when I came again. That it just clicked. Yeah. It's like, you know, like I did, like someone who, I did push-ups for no reason. And it was just, you know, until the day he had the lift sports analogy. I'm an artist. But you, you get my idea. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, how much it, it meant to me. Um I mean, I'm a huge. Uh, it's one of my number one favorite, you know, movies and uh, movies in general. And I could talk about that movie alone. But uh, yeah, it really prepped me and put me in the place without me even knowing it. And then uh, I'll jump ahead quickly and please interrupt me if I'm going on too much. <laughs> okay. um, um, when I went to college, uh, at University of the Arts in Philadelphia, our freshman year was called Foundation Year. What art schools have, especially fine art schools, which mine was sort of a hybrid fine art school. Um, and you just take your basic classes, drawing, 2D, 3 and then you take some electives that, you know, maybe you want this to be your major, maybe you want that to be your major. Administration class my first semester. And I really liked it, and the teacher was really, he did movie posters and advertisements, his name was Tim O'Brien, and he would bring you up some of his paintings every couple of weeks, and they were great. And I just realized, uh, okay, I'm, I'm done looking at this now, and then like he, but it, it's great, and then, you know, I did well, as lifelong friends in my class. And um, in another set of paintings later on, but he'd bring in some, a couple of the same ones. And, and then I realized with animation, it just keeps going. It, it tells you a story. It, it brings you somewhere, you know, as a filmmaker. In the second semester uh, of school, I took a kinetics class, they called it, which was kinetics meeting move. So, and, and they're artsy, so they couldn't just call it film and animation. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, very rudimentary with little blobby characters. And then that was it, like... Oh, I was about to curse. I was like, <laughs> I was like holy cow. Uh, <laughs> this isn't a podcast, it's a radio. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Um, radio, you kind of, uh, two and one. <laughs> you can't right, swear, okay. but you well, can't swear. I, I have some people over in the in Asia, I thought that was a blasphemy. So, <laughs> like, holy cow, like, the drawings are, like, it's alive. In that it's a couple of drawings for or the little, little flip book you make in the, in the textbook. This yeah. is which wasn't that great, but it alive. It had a personality, and all I did was draw a bunch of it. Wow. And that was it. And to this day, I still get that. Like on Simpsons, and, you know, and now I'm, I'm working on the great ninja, and we do watching on it ourselves, because we have to storyboard these days because of the way industry workflow is now, which you can get to later, too, if you want. But it's like, oh, I'll just do this thing, and it's like, I just sit back, and I'm like, just a bunch of drawings. <laughs> you know, and I think, actually, you know, I think I'm quoting somebody saying that. I kind of remember... Now it just came out of my mouth. I think it might have been one of the old Disney guys when where it is. It, I quote, and it's just a bunch of drawings. But it is. It's just. It's it's just. I just drew a few drawings, and now it it makes people cry, makes people laugh. It's a person, just so especially if you're young enough to not realize it. Yeah. I had a friend. I had a friend. His six year old daughter. You love the movie Chicken Run, huh. and um, they were uh, which I love too. But dinner one night, and then. Um, how something they were eating chicken and something was mentioned about the chicken and she's like but this isn't the chicken like a chicken right like no yeah it's the same kind of chicken and she just like froze and like wouldn't eat for a week <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah so it's just I just find it amazing and you know so yeah Oh. Tangent, pop my head. No, that's that's, that's that's okay. Well, I, I want well, I want to say thank you uh, for letting me do this uh, interview with you. Uh, first of all, because it uh, it's nice to finally say that I reached uh, the fiftieth milestone, I guess, uh, for 2013 uh, for interviews, and I 
and, and you don't know a whole lot about and everything, but if you ever want to go to my YouTube channel, I can always send you the link, and you can always check it out. And, uh, no, absolutely, totally. I'm on Podcast Addict, so, <laughs> or, you know, YouTube, you know, now that I sit down a lot at work. Oh, yeah. You know, YouTube, Podcast, whatever. Right now, I'm driving podcast work YouTube. <laughs> Kind of, kind of neat that uh, that just kind of just works out and stuff. But uh, and, uh, I would just want to say thanks, and uh, uh, that's uh, probably what I'm going to ask you for right now because I got to get ready for work and stuff like that. So sure, I appreciate uh, the, the time that I got with you there, Josh. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, you, just uh, to plug myself a little bit there, you can find a lot of the other stuff I do at uh, joshuatabak.com. It's kind of my hub page. I got some drawing there and some blog and YouTube channel and stuff for any more information. It's a lot of fun. All right. I'd like to come back. All right. Well, hey, I'd love to have you come back. Maybe next time we'll do some Skype or if you have like a Skype program and you have a, a webcam, we can always do a video or something like that. So maybe you can show some of your animations yeah. or something. That'd be kind of cool. Absolutely. All I right, can, man. I can share my screen and draw something. Sure. That'd be okay. All right, man. We'll see you later and uh, thanks again. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Very good.